you want to be in my B roll? What? Do you want to be in my B roll? No. Do you want to be in my B roll? Yeah, he looks thrilled about it. Just, just take a picture of him and fuck him. What the fuck is that, bruv? What's this? We've done it before. It's like you're picking your nose and you missed. Oh, that's what me and my friend do. With that? What's that? It's one other. One other? Yeah. As opposed to being sent to Rwanda? Or <laughs> no comment. Visit, is, is that what you want on your sleeve next year? Visit one other? <laughs> what, what, what's one other? It's, uh, it's just a sign. Nico, do you know about one other? Okay, that's okay, because Clayton was speaking there. He was looking at me like I was some old... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One order, yeah. You know what one order is. Nah, it's a gang sign, like one order. It's a, it's a gang sign, apparently. <laughs> I don't actually know what it means, to be fair. Is that, yeah, my, yeah. my friend does Maybe it. you want to start Googling that, because maybe it's bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is bad. Yeah, maybe. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm not ready to start, yo. <laughs> oh, okay. My, my back's gone as well. Wait, d- don't start about your oh, back, yeah, nah. mate. <laughs> know your audience. <laughs> yeah, know your audience. I went boxing I'm, last I'm ready. You ready? Everyone ready? Yeah, ready. Let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name's James. Welcome to Planet FPL People's Poll Podcast, where we give the Twitter X community uh, a list of subjects for them to choose from for us to discuss. It is FPL themed this week. And I think we've done the right thing by binning Serge, who actually has binned himself today. And we've brought in Clayton because I think might need a bit of Arsenal chat on this one. How are you, Clayton? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm good. Doing all right. Thank you. Good stuff. Uh, so, uh, just before we get into the people's poll, just to clarify a couple of things. Uh, obviously, Carabao Cup results in midweek. Uh, Middlesbrough beat Chelsea 1-0. Liverpool beat Fulham 2-1. That changes nothing currently in terms of the probability of Liverpool-Chelsea being the Carabao Cup final. Other than the probability of it being Chelsea is a little bit less, but it's still the most likely scenario currently. Remember, those second legs are played before game week 22 as is the FA Cup third round replays and the FA Cup fourth round. Yeah, that's correct. So there's plenty to learn ahead of game week 22. It doesn't mean you can't make early transfers, everyone, but caution. Um, The three options in the poll for today's podcast were uh, Salah, Sun replacements, which didn't win the vote and has now become a replace Trent, Bowen and a few other players because <laughs> um, everybody has a lot of flags at the moment. Um, do you know just roughly what you're doing this week? No, not a clue. I know who I'm captaining right now, which is helpful for this we'll, one. We'll talk, yeah. But no, transfer-wise, no, not a clue at the minute. Okay. Um, all I'd say is on Trent and Bowen specifically, which are the new injuries that we didn't know about from Tuesday's podcast, both players could be back for game week 22. They might only miss one game. So for me, knowing that Salah's highly likely to miss at least three more and Son's likely to miss, I think, four more, those are still the two players that are first and foremost on the chopping block for me. I have seen quite a bit of talk going around about wildcard and there will be people sitting there with like seven, eight flags at the moment panicking. And if it's that bad, then I understand it. But for most people... Honestly, if you if you can manoeuvre this week, even taking like a minus eight is going to be better. Because as per Tuesday's podcast, there's going to be a lot of scenarios in the future where I think that's going to be way more useful for you than now. Plus, as already said, the amount of information you can learn for game with 22, you might wildcard into something and shit happens in the cup results that just completely changes the outlook of future games. It's a, it's a bad week to wildcard, in my opinion, yep. because there's so much information to learn before the next one. But if you've done it, I wish you the very, very best of luck. Um, another option in the poll, which lost very, very narrowly, and Clayton didn't want to do it because he's like, I don't I know what the <laughs> template is at the moment, which is no bad thing, was uh, a discussion about which templates to bin, which is part of the discussion around ideally getting back the likes of Salah, Sun, maybe if people want to get to Trent in a little bit that don't have or are selling now. To get there, some form of template has probably got to be removed somewhere. So I was going to have a conversation about the likes of Pedro Porro, Dominic Solanke, Ollie Watkins. We're not going to do that though, because that didn't win the vote. What won the vote was 
Game week 21, Captain C. Uh, you said you know what you're doing. Don't tell us yet, but yeah. are you 100% on that? Oh, no, not 100%, but right now I'm confident in my bus captain. Yeah. So I'm going to guess, to start with, that bus captain is not Erling Haaland. Uh, correct. And if it, Pep says, oh, yeah, he's starting Saturday, what are we doing? Same as you, as what you said on the chip strategy. Minus four in, captain. It's simple as that. As simple as that. Minus four in, yep. just get it done, stick the armband on him. If Pep says that, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's probably my take as well. I suspect Pep is not going to be that open about it. <laughs> no. um, and Newcastle away is a tough enough fixture, despite some of their troubles recently. They'll obviously be in a much better frame of mind following the victory at Sunderland in the Cup. Um, that for me, that's a, uh, okay, let's, let's get this through this week without it. I also think I know where I'm going. Okay. And I, I suspect we may be landing in the same place. But I, I, wonder, I don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay, that, that's interesting. I think I, you're going to laugh me out the room. Worth, rather than just going, this player, this player, this player, is to actually talk about the 10 games. And some yep. of them we can just like skip over. Um, for example, Burnley Luton. Are, are we considering anything here nah. for captaincy? No. no. Okay. So the lunchtime kickoff on Saturday is Chelsea against Fulham. Uh, I presume there is some Chelsea consideration here. There is. Uh, but, oh, big Bart. Oh, no, yeah. So, like, I've, I've got Cole Palmer and I've been considering him. Yep. Um, one thing I'd like to throw out there, so I had a little look at FPL review to see projected points. Look at you. I know, yeah. I, uh, I, I, di- I didn't have time for this. So, um, Cole Palmer is ranked fairly highly. I've excluded Erling Haaland for the sake of discussion, just to look at alternatives, but... Uh, his points projected is the one, two, three, joint fourth highest at the minute. For this for, week? For the game week, yeah. So just just run through top five, interestingly. So, Saka. And this is from FPL Review, it, yeah, to clarify. Yeah, FPL yep. Review, uh, timestamp. What day is it today? Thursday it's morning. It's Thursday morning, yep. Um, excluding Erling Haaland. So Bakayo Saka's highest, 5.8 projected. Ivan Tony in second. Wow. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Uh, your favourite player, Richarlison. <laughs> uh, yeah, and okay. then Martin Odegaard and then in joint fifth is Cole Palmer and Jao Pedro and Julian Alvarez okay so don't think any of them names surprise I mean I, to be honest I, I sent you a list of 15 players yeah. which I think I mean it was quite difficult to put 15 players together this week are we definitive that Palmer would be I don't know I should say hypothetically we're free hitting this week is Palmer definitively definitely the best Chelsea choice here I think so I'm, I'm, I would like Sterling but <clears throat> he hasn't played in the last couple right and I'm a bit unsure on his minutes um, yeah I, I think Palmer I'd be quite confident in him so he scored in the FA Cup game against Preston yep. started against <laughs> Middlesbrough in midweek as well in which by the way for anybody who saw that game on Tuesday night Palmer could have had a hat trick by half time oh really time. I didn't see it he missed a couple of big chances, yeah. He went full on Timo Werner to welcome him back into the league. Um, he basically played a sort of false nine-ish position okay. in the start of the game. Now, Breuer didn't start, and I think Armando Breuer probably does start against Fulham this weekend. Probably just a, a bit more of um, a better suited matchup with Fulham having, I presume, Diop and Adaribayo will, will have to be Fulham centre-backs. And there's that as well to consider that Fulham be without Calvin Bassey who's obviously gone to AFCON and has been playing quite yeah. well recently. But the flip is as well, if you watched the game last night, Fulham acquitted themselves very well for an hour, then came under it. Did you see any of the game last uh, night? No, I didn't. I only saw the second half, and to be honest, Fulham had a good few opportunities to make it 2-0. All right, okay. By the end that they got out of there, they were probably happy to walk out of there having only lost 2-1 because it looked like Liverpool could go and make it 3-4-1. Once Liverpool scored... Yeah, it was inevitable what was going to happen after that. But Fulham had some real good moments on the counter. And I think we've seen them this year give some of the bigger teams troubles. They've taken four points off yourselves. Yep, cheers for that. Uh, Sorry, mate. Uh, You knew I'd get it in. (laughs) And their home form is fine, right? Um, Particularly in some of the the more difficult fixtures. And not my team out of the Carabao Cup this year. There you go. There's one back for you, mate. We had a reserve team out, though. (laughs) Um, So, I mean, it's not... It's not the best fixture on paper. There's also the narrative of it's West London derby. And mm. I think you can spin this one either way. You can say, well, it's Fulham's most important league game of the season. But as I discussed with Dara on COTC that went out on Monday when we spoke about the game, I said, look, would, would you rather beat Chelsea or win the cup semi final? It was like the cup semi final. Yeah. Of course. So are they going to have fatigued legs from Wednesday night to the Saturday lunchtime? turnaround it's not ideal we know that and we never speak about it when it's a Fulham problem we only speak mm. about it when it's a big club problem 
Uh, I think those who want to go Palmer will also be infused by Burnley Luton being the Friday night, so it's not captain in the literal first yeah. game of the game week. It does impact people. The, the people generally don't want to do that unless it's Mo Salah, basically. So I think Cole Palmer is, is a great option. There's nothing to overly put me off about him other than me trying to ascertain if he's the best option. I think he'll be one of the two most popular. I agree. But I'm you intrigued. Said, you said review had him at what, fourth? Uh, joint fifth. Joint fifth. Yeah, but that was marginal. Like you're talking in terms of projected points, like point two within it. Okay, so, so it's next to nothing. Yeah. It's negligible. Okay, fine. Uh, the 5.30 kickoff on Saturday is Newcastle against Manchester City. Yes, sir. <coughs> let's, let's work without Haaland for sure. the moment. Alvarez, in your thoughts? No. Do you, do you own him? No, because I think for Alvarez to become an option here, it feels like it's got to be that Guardiola says Haaland's not going to play. Oh, that's what I meant. Now, if Haaland's not going to play, and we know that, then, yeah, I think Alvarez becomes, just by virtue of being managed to City centre forward, becomes a, an option again. So for someone like me who owns both Alvarez and Palmer, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of other people that do as well, would you have a preference on those two so far? Yeah, Palmer. Yeah, okay. Didn't hesitate there. yeah. Well, I just, I just think it's the... It's the, the Holland effect. Yeah, it is the Holland scenario, yeah. Sure. Which I think has been enough to make me not overly consider Alvarez. There's still... I mean, listen, I captain Salah against Newcastle the other week, but I think going to St. James is a different kettle, right? Yeah. I mean, they're strong. I know they'd lost to Forest recently, but generally speaking, they're strong. They have obviously... The, the break of games is now better for them, so yeah. I know that didn't help them at Liverpool... But it was five days to Sunderland. It's then going to be over a week from Sunderland to this game. And in terms of their strongest 11, at least, you know, there's a few you can debate, but they're getting close to it now. Yeah, yeah. So going to Newcastle, 5.30 on a Saturday. Could City go there and win comfortably? Yeah, it was City, isn't it? But I'd be hugely shocked if they got beat. So, whereas I would be quite confident, oh, Chelsea fans would disagree with me. I'd be confident Chelsea win on Saturday. Okay. As part for me, the big narrative on it would be Fulham's recovery from from last night. So Alvarez, no, I don't even think he'd necessarily be the best City captaincy, well, excluding Holland. Is it because you've got Foden on the list? Yeah, I, I think yeah. Foden. There's no reason to think he won't start. Kevin De Bruyne was quite helpful, saying yep. that he expects to be a sub again. But in any case, I just think Foden's playing too well at the moment. Sure. So. Even if it was a case of shoehorning De Bruyne and Haaland into the team, then I think Foden would play off the right and Bernardo Silva maybe plays a deeper role, for example. But I don't see that happening. I see Foden playing in this favoured role at the moment. And his form now was meant you don't have to rush Kevin De Bruyne, right? Yeah, there true. is no reason to rush it. There is obviously going to be a period coming up where the fixtures get a bit more congested, but it's not for a couple of weeks. Can't see De Bruyne starting. Um, therefore, I think Foden plays in his most favoured position. Even if, if Haaland did start and De Bruyne didn't, could he even play Alvarez and Foden as two very high eights? Okay. He could, if he decides to... Do you to own Foden? No, but I might be buying him. Okay. I mean, I don't own Cole Palmer at this moment either. I'll be straightforward and say, um, I had a look again following the cup results last night and I think my most likely scenario is to buy Foden and Palmer. Which did you say Foden and Palmer or Foden instead of Palmer? No, Foden and Palmer. Okay. Yeah, because um, I've been without Palmer for long. The, the one thing that's been putting me off Palmer is you have to factor this into your thinking. Sorry to digress from game with twenty one captaincy for a minute, but if we think Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, and Luton are unlikely to play in twenty six, we've got to have an awareness of this, right? So I see people what Matley going. Oh, I'm going to go Trent to Doughty. Which is not, on the face of it, it's absolutely fine. I've said previously, if I was wild carding now, I probably would have Doughty in. But it's just another one that's probably not going to play in 26. Now, if you're going to commit to a free hit 26, then fine. But you can't basically commit to it until we get towards game week 22 yeah. with certainty. Because what if Middlesbrough and Fulham is the, the Carabao Cup final? It's not impossible. It's not impossible, no. Absolutely not. So I just. Be very cautious of buying anything, Luton, Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool at this minute in time. Because it's very conceivable that you'll get to 25 if the double happens, you'll want treble Liverpool. You then carry in, say, Palmer, Gusto, maybe Porro, Richarlison. You put Doughty on top of that as well. Like, what are you down? Eight players for yeah. game week 26. And then you might be forcing yourself into a wild card. So just be aware of that. And that was my awareness with Palmer. My situation is not as extreme as that. 
and I'd actually only be leaving myself in a position currently where I'd have three. So I'd sure. have Porro, okay, Palmer, and Trent would stay for me that's at the moment. Yeah. But then I'm going to want at least Salah back. Yep. Um, which I'm probably going to be in a position of four, maybe five then, in terms of blanking game week 26. I have a plan in mind. So I think it's probably going to be Palmer Foden. The other player in my situation that was really considering all seriousness is was Garnacho. And that was part of money. Sure. I think he's I think he's a really good option and I think he'll do quite well this weekend as well. Okay. I think if I had to captain a city player this week, I think it'd be Foden. Yeah. Without the Holland information. Ask me tomorrow night and it might be Holland's unavailable and I maybe yeah, would maybe edge back to Alvarez. Yeah. I think so it would have it would be Foden if I went to go down that route interesting. now. Interesting. Without Holland I'd still lean Alvarez personally. You'd have to say Foden here's probably the form horse. Yeah. I'd agree with that. And I think by virtue of that, there are people that will consider going there. Sure. Uh, what about Ollie Watkins? I'm not keen. I can understand why people would go there depending on who they've got elsewhere in the team. But I, ju- I think Everton defensively, especially at home, are actually pretty good. Yeah, uh, Everton fans might disagree with that. Yeah, I know. Though they have improved uh, I, quite a bit recently. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too keen on it. I, don't, I think I look at the other fixtures, like Chelsea-Fulham, I, I do see goals there. City-Newcastle... I, if you're talking ceilings, like I, I can see City scoring two three. I don't really see Villa going to Everton and thrashing them per se. No, but they could draw one one hypothetically, and Watkins scores and he might walk away with nine points. Yeah, and I would suggest think of it like this: any of, if you could offer anyone, I think nine points for their captaincy this week, they'd take it. I agree with Without that. Without a doubt, yeah. I, I don't think, actually. Yeah, I agree. I think if you had, you know, Haaland or Salah with great fixtures or something, you'd feel a bit different about it's it. It's the same with a... To be honest, if you... From my perspective, if you offered me a return this week, I'd probably <laughs> take it. It's, it does feel a bit <laughs> scraping the barrel a little bit. I don't know, you know. I'm not sure about a return. I think nine points, yeah, agree. Of all the players we're going to go through here, Watkins is going to be way out in front in terms of top FPL point scorer this season. yeah. Definitely plays. There's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. The play on the first weekend, which is advantageous as well. Um, he can return in any game at any time. I don't think it's the worst one. I've suggested to a lot of people. I think it's a very... almost feels like he he could or perhaps should be the vice captain of choice this week. That's exactly where I'd like... like, like he's he a w- certain star. Yeah. Even Palmer's not 100%. That's exactly... I feel like he is the perfect vice captain this week. I, I've still... Maybe I'm just greedy. I always want a little bit more from my captain and feel like there's better options elsewhere personally this week. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think you, you're right. I think Everton away is a tough enough fixture. I don't think Villa's away form doesn't inspire huge confidence... Um, even if you look at, say, the win at Brentford, that was kind of heavily impacted by the red card in that game. They drew at Bournemouth with a very late Ollie Watkins goal, ironically, and he did haul in, in that fixture with a goal and an assist. So Villa home and away, I don't want to say two different teams, that's not fair, um, but their away form is not as sharp yeah. as their home form. They will receive the benefit of Bubakar Kamara back this weekend, yeah. which I think is just helpful just generally for Villa in the game. Yep. Um, so if people want to go Watkins, I can understand it. He's, I think he's, his EO will, will be comfortably under 100 because I've not seen much talk of him as captain. No, I haven't either. So I don't think there's a need from that perspective. And I presume in terms of overall ownership, Watkins and Saka are clearly the, the two most. That, but yeah. I think Saka's EO is likely to be much higher. Agree. So I presume no Everton assets uh, no. in terms of you wouldn't consider a DCL or anything like that. Uh, would you? No, no. <laughs> no, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Uh, United Tottenham Sunday afternoon. So, you've got a few players on the list you've sent me from this fixture. Yeah, and there's more for Manchester United than Tottenham. Yeah, which surprises me. Well, which Tottenham player? I, I've got one on there, which is for Charleston, which the models are saying sort of top five. Mate, he's, he's my bus captain. <laughs> you're not captain for Charleston. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's my bus captain. Really? Yeah, I think you guys will go there and win. I think he'll play. I I think he'll get in positions. He'll get into chart. Uh, he'll get into positions. I put you chances. in for Arsenal <laughs> chat, not stupid chat. <laughs> I mean, talk me out. Okay, no, I, I guess it's more talk me into it <laughs> rather than talk me out of it. But I I think he'll do well. Okay. Do um, you think he'll start? Yes, yes, he'll definitely start. Um, don't think that's in in question. 
Lo Celso, we think, has got a hamstring injury, so I think Kulusevski is going to have to play the 10 position. Okay. Um, Werner's obviously signed. For anybody who picked up the Tottenham video released yesterday, um, which showed kind of a, a Werner in training kind of little okay. minute Not video, wasn't once shown taking a shot. <laughs> okay. But he was shown putting crosses in. Okay, so you think like left wing maybe? I think so. That's been the general narrative. I think Werner will start, by the way. Okay. I mean, he's probably got to. Yeah. It's probably Werner or Brian Hill. I think yeah. just throw Werner in, I think. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not like he's not got big game experience or anything like that. It's not like, the, oh, I've never played on this stage before. He knows the league yeah. as well. So I think probably yes. Um, I wouldn't expect a lot out of Werner because I presume he'll be one-on-one with, subject to Luke Shaw's fitness, he's probably going to go one-on-one with wan who... Whatever his criticism is, he's obviously an extremely good yeah. 1v1 defender, yeah. Yep. But it will be pass and move and you might get him on concentration. So you can still get behind, but he's not going to be doing lollipops and beating him. No. Let's put it that way. Do you know what? Like my, okay, my actual rationale for Richarlison, like I said, I think he'll start. Yeah. I rate you guys offensively. I think you'll create enough chances and I think he will get the chances. Like obviously, his finishing is a bit wayward sometimes but the way I play fantasy football I like to pick players that I think will consistently get the chances that's why I have an unhealthy obsession with a Darwin Nunes uh, for all of my sins so that's actually the rationale why I've gone there to be fair I think um, I'm going to do a piece for advanced tier patrons on talking tactics today as well a, a little bit as, it's kind of looking at Tottenham's weaknesses on the right hand side actually um, but it's going to morph into a, a look at the tactical battle on Sunday and basically, I would, if I was Ten Hag, I would set Manchester United up with Bruno Fernandes at false nine. Okay. And basically play him at the tip of a diamond. And I would just use Rashford and Garnacho as wide forwards with no defensive responsibility. Sure. Which, you know, the risk of that is, right? Yeah. You're going to let Porro and Udogi go. But you're hoping then that you're going to, they're moving into a diamond shape. Sure. And the wide midfielders of that can then be responsible for them. It's Ten Hag, he won't do that. <laughs> no, probably <laughs> not. But I think with Rashford and Garnacho in the space, because the other thing with that is if they just let Poro and Udogi go, Poro and Udogi have their own decision to make, right? Well, what are we going to do with these two just holding the touchline, literally not defending? And the, the thinking of that is Tottenham won't change. So you drag the wide centre backs out. And then you vacate Bruno through the middle to take advantage is part of my thinking. Okay, but it, yeah, I don't think Ten Hag will do that. Just a um, <clears throat> but part part of Richarlison is obviously the creativity of not not necessarily through the wide players of Johnson. I presume will play on the right. As I said, Kulusevski is probably going to have to play in in the ten position. I think Oliver Skip will probably get the nod over Hoyberg okay. to play with slash in front of Benson Corp. And it doesn't scream creativity for me, mate. No, but I think I look at you guys more as like a system rather than individual personnel. So it, it, it generally could be defined here by what United to do, decide to do with Poro and Udogi sure. in terms of how creative I think Tottenham are on the day. So uh, I think despite injury problems, that lack of creativity might prove to be a problem. Okay. And if United go back to, let's say, Oli Ball, and they'll probably have success. I've said a number sure. of times over the last couple of weeks, I think the team that turns over better in transition on the counter will win the game to be fair you and I think we'll probably have them if United haven't got their players back fit I think we're probably going to have the majority of the ball sure. I don't think that's going to be a surprise yeah to be fair you mentioning that little tactical uh, comment is making me concerned about my captaincy pick now oh he's wavered already yeah I've wavered already but on the it's other, all right, you might talk in a minute I might waver on mine <laughs> but on the on the list you do have from Man United Bruno and Rashford and obviously if, if you're saying if they do go prime Oli ball and they kind of hit you on the counter you reckon there's some success in there for them I think Marcus Rashford is one of the best captaincy picks this week wow um, he might even be the best just purely as the tactical matchup, like you say, you guys will have a lot of the ball, you think, if they win it high. Yeah, Tottenham also have, they have a bigger problem, this part why I want to cover in this piece today. They have a bigger problem defending the right-hand side than the left-hand side. Um, and I think that's just down to Udogi's more imposing to beat than Poro. And po- uh, this is, it's not a Poro criticism, actually. No, no, I know. It's a, it's a set-up criticism of, on Vanges, actually, that he leaves space in the wide areas. Now, Rashford is inspiring no confidence whatsoever. I watched a game against Wigan Monday night. It, it kind of looks physically back at it, but he, he, something's missing okay. quite clearly. 
but and he's yet gonna, you he's, still he's think... going to enjoy space in this, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if he plays on the left, which I presume he probably will, I think. Assuming it's Rashford left, it'll probably be Garnacho up front and, uh, sorry, Hoyland up front and Garnacho right. I think from that three, Rashford becomes the best sure. because of that. Okay. That playing on the left. I mean, your logic, yeah, I, I get it. The other thing that Tottenham definitely do, which I think we can all agree on, is they do give up a lot of shots because they give up a lot of chances. Now, in terms of actual shooting ability, Rashford and Fernandes are still two of the best ball strikers in the league. Yep. So... I, by do the way, I'm not. No, I'm. If I owned Marcus Rashford, I would maybe do it. There's no way I'm buying him. So I because I would still buy Garnacho because as a longer term plan, that would be a. Yeah. You know, Rashford is not worth three and a half million more than Garnacho at the moment. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people on Twitter talking about using like Salasson money to go to Bruno. For those people that are getting him in, where would you rank him captaincy wise based on the other options we've spoken about so far? Who, Rashford and Bruno? Yeah, just specifically Bruno, because I've seen a lot of people talking about buying him. Bruno Bruno, a little bit um, less, I think, because there's there's different ways he may end up playing. And I think whatever Ten Hag decides to do, there will have to be an awareness of Porro and Udogi and how you pick them up out of the ball. And it might be that Fernandez gets the responsibility of one of them. It could be. Now, if that's the case... That's probably a bit shit. But also in terms of turnovers, if someone's you know slinging Rashford away on the counter-attack, who do you think's finding him? Yeah, it's probably going to be Rashford. Yeah. Christian Eriksen also capable. Obviously, Eriksen wouldn't be a captaincy consideration. I think if I had to rank them this week, it would be Rashford over Fernandez for me. Okay. I wouldn't advocate anyone buying Marcus Rashford. But I'll tell you what, if I was someone who'd pressed the wild card early... Yeah. And there's a lot on there. I'd really consider it. Yeah, because you could use him as a little holder for Salah, for example. Oh, there's a lot of people on wildcard, right? So, let's see. It's not as many as it sounds, I don't think. Oh, no. No, no. Don't get tempted. Yeah, if I had him, I, I think he'd certainly be top five for me, Rashford. Okay. And I think he's the best option for the captaincy if you just add all 22 players from that fixture. I think United probably will just about edge us. That said, the other flip is... Mickey van der Ven was obviously back last week. Do you think he's... I think so. Yeah. Ben Davis, we think, is out four to six weeks. That, so that yeah. probably enforces it. Sure. And Christian Romero, all the Tottenham ITKs are saying, Romero saying he wants to play. Okay. Oh, you got a new centre-back signing though, right? Do you think Radu he, Dragashin he, should be confirmed today. He Had the medical done last night. It's just literal announcement. So, it, yeah, it'll get announced today. But is there a chance he goes straight in instead yes. of Van der Ven? Or? Yes, there is a chance. And okay. that can go one or two ways, right? Yeah, I don't know anything about him. I know he's highly rated. Um, look, as a debut, that would be a challenge. Yeah. But I think there's every chance that Ange would take a look at him and just decide to, to potentially fry him in. That said, also, that's not necessarily better than for stopping the United players. Actually, I thought our best player against Burnley was Emerson Royal. Okay who played right-sided centre-back, which probably sums up, actually, that we didn't play very well on, on the night and were a little bit fortunate to go through. Um, but to be honest, he would probably deserve to play again. So there's three options in terms of who could play right-sided centre-back for yeah. Tottenham. And Emerson and Dragashin could both play left-sided and right-sided centre-back. Okay. So Is Romero pr predominantly right? Romero would definitely play right. Sure. Dragashin would be preferable right but as played as left sided in a back three for Genoa quite a bit so okay. it wouldn't be alien to him Emerson obviously better suited from the right as well but can cover left obviously if he decides to play Mickey van der Ven that's definitely the left sided centre back um, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about for you and Richarlison I think I would play Hoiberg over Skip personally what do you think Andrew will do though I think he'll play Oliver Skip okay yeah and I think he'll try and use him as a as a runner sure to break in late to the box. Yeah, your tactical logic has semi put me off, I can't lie. Play it your way, Clayton. <laughs> Talking of which, moving on. So the following weekend, what I would say is if your intended captain this week has not been mentioned yet, i.e. they're playing on the second weekend, please stick the vice captaincy on someone that we have already mentioned. Like an it's Ollie just a, what Cole Palmer I, yeah, any of them, any of them we've mentioned, even if it's like Richarlison, like it's fine for a vice captaincy. I would not be keen on having the captain and the vice captain playing second week. Um, and I completely get that you could stick the vice captaincy on Ollie Watkins and he could get injured in training on Saturday. I yeah. get that. 
but that's one training session to get through rather than six or yeah. seven. And that's just unlucky in that case. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I'd probably say Jared Bowen is probably not a discussion now, but I would have hated something like that as a vice captaincy when they've got a fixture yeah. next midweek as well, for example. Um, Tony, by the way, cannot play the FA Cup third round replay against Wolves. Uh, yep. Um, so there's no danger of him getting injured next week. Arsenal Crystal Palace is the early next week. I'll go ahead and say it, Clates. Uh, the captaincy is on Bakaya Saka for me. And I like it. If I owned him, I would do the same. But like a melon, I've got triple Arsenal defence, so I can't get there. Of course you do. <laughs> How's that been going for you, baby? <laughs> There was one clean sheet in there. How to fuck, how to fuck up and derail Arsenal's title challenge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, get triple Arsenal defence. <laughs> Before oh, Luton. Wow. Like, oh, yeah. Did you uh, had anything out of that? Uh, yeah, we had Brian. one. We, yeah. One did you sheet. even play all three against Brian? I did, actually, oh, yeah. did, okay. Um, Have you yeah. been playing all three of them every game? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I need to. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I, I can't even hate it as a strategy because I know you've said plenty of times invest in Arsenal defensive. And my longer term plan had always actually been to get double Arsenal defence yeah, myself look. and it didn't really work out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a conversation so for you, another So day. you actually think Saka's the best choice. I, but I you ju- can't get there, I'm guessing. Yeah, I've cock blocked myself basically. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> uh, I do actually think he's the best choice though. Okay. Uh, um, he's. N- He's not looking great. No, I was going to say not at it would be completely unfair. No, actually. I, I agree with that. I don't think is he is he fit. <laughs> I think he's fit. I think he's just, well. I guess he's not fit. If what I'm about to say is what my opinion is, I think he's just burnt out. Like, I think he's knackered. But we he got, has not been the same since he missed the Manchester City game, which was game week what eight. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's he's not. No, he's not been tearing it up, mate. No, no, completely agree. Uh, I guess my. Well, what's your reasoning for why you've gone there? Um, there's two reasons, uh, and they're, they're quite simplistic, and it's not looking at data or anything like that. It's, uh, well, actually, there's three. I think Arsenal got the best fixture of the players available this week. I think even if I look at, you know, the opponents of players under consideration here, bar maybe Tony, <laughs> they've probably got the best fixture. Um, and then a, Liverpool at Bournemouth? I know Bournemouth are doing quite well. Yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, agree. I had to think Bournemouth for better than Palace at the moment. Yeah, at Palace agree. without Michael Elise as well, right? Agree, yeah. Um, and Palace will also play on the Wednesday night against Everton before playing you Saturday lunchtime in their cup replay. That obviously could go to extra time. Yeah, true. So there's a potential fatigue issue for Palace. But that's an away game as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, similar circumstance to obviously what Fulham have got this week, admittedly, but that could be even worse in terms of extra time and stuff like that. Uh, it's not been selected for the TV channels in the UK, by the way. Everybody will be relieved to know. You can watch Blackpool against Night in the Forest next Wednesday instead really? on ITV4. My mate plays that, for Blackpool, so that, I will uh, be watching. Who plays for Blackpool? My mate, Marvin Ekpateta. Oh, went to school. Mate, yeah? Yeah. Can you do dropping bombs here? Like, yeah. see them two clowns on Match of Day 2 the other night? <laughs> Uh, Ashley no. Williams and Neda Manura, I really like actually. Both no, dropping in see. like about. Oh, yeah, he's my mate. And oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually taking that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think there's there's the Palace narrative, there's the two week break, there's the surely you. It's not just, oh, it's Palace at home. You've got to be quite up for it because there's a two week wait here of yeah. bad results and a kind of bad mentality and wanting to fix that and sort it out straight away. I think if I look just individually, which player do I think is the most likely to give an attacking return this week? It's Saka. Agree. It's my opinion. If I look this week and I think, tell me now that someone's going to go off and haul, which I don't don't think any of these players do actually, by the way. No. It's Saka. There's also perhaps a narrative for me in the sense that I captain Saka in the blank game week of the FA Cup quarterfinals last season in which you beat Crystal Palace 4-1 and Bakayo yeah. Saka returned 18 points. So I certainly wouldn't expect that again and I would absolutely settle for half, as already said. Um, but I've good experience of doing it mm-hmm. in that particular fixture as well. And it does feel like, it's, it, it almost in a weird way, almost feels like a blank game week this week for captaincy I know what because you mean, of yeah. so many good options have just suddenly left the game, basically. Yeah. So... 
I think that's a reliable horse who, with a two-week break, I mean, to be honest, Arteta would play him if he was sitting in a wheelchair anyway, <laughs> bless him, poor sod. But he definitely you plays... You stole that from Slack. I saw I that. I did steal that from Slack. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know which patron said that, but I did steal it. Wait, that that's shameless. Right. Shameless plug for our patron there. Thanks, Clayton. Um, I'm really bad that I don't know what patron that was now. But yes, I did steal it. But we've all said it before anyway, right? And it, But then that's also the problem with him at the moment. It was Bluebird, Adam. Blue but, yeah, well done, that Adam. is the problem. Uh, on the, just to add, like, I basically agree with everything you said. I just think this rest has been perfectly timed, and I think you will see a bit more freshness in his legs as well as everyone else. And on the finishing, like I know there is a narr- well, it's not a narrative; it's factual. Like the finishing has been poor recently. I I don't think it's as <laughs> bigger problem as everyone is making out I think you can just have these games where the ball just doesn't go in and you can be dare I say it unlucky Uh, it's a combination of poor decision making sure but I think in terms of general Arsenal if we went and beat Palace 3-0 I would not be surprised no uh, to be honest it's almost nearly what I'd expect yeah like if we were doing the diff show right now I think that's my score prediction what I would add in though in terms of a tactical for this game is we have seen Palace in some of the bigger games including the recent visit to Manchester City, go with a 5-4-1. Okay. Now, they might do that against you. Now, under that circumstance, young Saka's obviously got to hold the touchline very much so, which yeah. he does anyway. But in terms of if he's coming inside, he might just be coming into trouble a little bit more. Yep. But I also just look at him and think, his delivery from corners is pretty good. Particularly them near post ones, I always say to you, are an absolute nightmare yeah. to defend. He's on pens, I presume. I think so, yeah. And I would think because of his and Arsenal's recent form, should Arsenal get a penalty against Palace, there's, I don't think... There's this, not going to be any I charity don't think there's pens gonna going be on. No. Exactly <laughs> that, yeah. I don't think there's going to be, hey, Kai, I know you <laughs> took 20 minutes to have a shot against Liverpool, have a penalty. And for him as well, he missed... Yeah, uh, he missed, uh, a, you know, missed a massive chance yeah, in the second half, them, yeah. didn't he? So... I think he'll be eager and keen to do well as well. Who knows? Maybe this little two-week break, suddenly he's revitalised and he looks like the Pakaya Saka. I don't even want to say that he's been playing badly. Because I never... Like, we've been very critical of Marcus Rashford, for example, in oh, I terms don't think of his work ethic. That, but no, not, no, not but at all. I'd, but I'd, he does look Yeah, I don't think tired. he's been playing to the standard we know he can. So... I'd guess that in itself is playing badly for his standards. Yeah. I think with this game not being till next weekend, we could spin the narrative here wherever we like yeah. in lots of different ways. Or he's tired, he's got a break. As ever with these, you can spin them both ways. That's my intention for captaincy is, sure. is Saka. Yep, I like it. Is that definitely the best Arsenal choice? Or should there be a consideration here for an Odegaard, a, a Martinelli, I a Havertz? I, uh, I think Odegaard is a uh, consideration. I think... I. I will always prefer Saka out of them too. In just a straight Odegaard gets a return. He's probably in the bonus, isn't he? Yeah, um, and just, especially now we're like he's getting. And you said review had him in the top five, did you? I did actually. Odegaard, yeah, good memory. Uh, yeah, he was fourth. Good shout. I don't hate that. Like if someone was sitting there, if I was sitting there with Odegaard in the team and not Saka. Uh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it'd be a real consideration. But I don't think Odegaard over Saka. No, agree. and I also think, like. Go back three, four weeks. I think my intention would have been to get here and probably buy Odegaard. I think, right, it's a couple of good fixtures here. Palace at home, Forest away, double up on Arsenal. But I think your form plus Foden's form uh, has meant that's that's not really on the table for me at the moment. It's yeah, also sure. more expensive in Odegaard as well. That 0.6 would actually be important to me yeah. as well. Uh, just one thing you mentioned, I wouldn't go near a Martinelli or a... Who was the others you mentioned? Like Havertz or... A, like Martinelli, I think... And Ketchuf? Nah. Jesus was I, definitely I, out? I, I can't say with confidence it will be him or Havertz right now uh, because... Havertz against Liverpool had chances obviously didn't finish them but the midfield actually I thought played quite nicely in Jorginho Rice and Odegaard so I don't okay. know if you we haven't spoken about the, the best captaincy yet in that particular fixture which is obviously odds on Edouard uh, won't uh, be Mateta no? no I think Edouard would be back ok but he might have to play wide because the lease is knackered oh, Palace strikers <laughs> didn't do like a goal against us right. Brentford Forest let's get straight to it yeah. Ivan Tony. I, uh, I like it I really like it do you know what I don't mind it either yeah. <laughs> it's got the narrative to it hasn't <laughs> yeah. it particularly as well like what I've said and it's like 
would I just settle for a captaincy return this week? Yeah, well, probably. Do you know what I was thinking? Like, not, not a haul, but when you said in the previous section, like, if there's one player that you think can haul, I was thinking, if there's one player I think I can get two returns, I think it's, it's Tony. could be him, yeah. Like, I, I really... <laughs> I would have, I've not done my planning in terms of my strategy or anything, but I, I want to have a look to see if I can find a way to get him in. I don't know what their fixtures look, are like if, after. If people do want to take advantage of the fact that they're on wild card right now, I would, he'd, he'd be in. Ah, oh, but then it's Spurs away and, and City like, at and, home. After. And someone like Rashford would go in as well yeah. for me at the moment. Okay. I think the problem is, for most people, most people are going to be in the, the replacing Salah, Sun, Bowen boat. Like, if anyone's listening or watching hasn't got at least one of those three players, then congratulations at this minute. Or maybe not, she might yeah, be like ranked yeah, like four million rank or something, <laughs> whatever. Um, but with those three, the Trent situation, other little problems and niggles people might have because there are a few going round. Like, where you're finding the time to buy a Tony in place of a Solanke, a Watkins, or an Alvarez this week. Mm. Not, not, not for me personally. Yeah. I couldn't. It'd have to be a hit. I hate their fixtures afterwards. Yes, there's the narrative of there'll be a double, highly likely against City. Certainly at some point before the March internationals, but that extra fixture is City away. Yeah, but he scored twice there last year, James. Yeah, I know that, but that's unlikely to happen again. Let's be yeah. honest. But in terms of captaincy this week, yeah, I think it's top five. Yeah, I think Off so. Of nothing. I think he's probably top three. Off of nothing <laughs> other than knowing what his capability is. I remember Forrest have got six players gone to AFCOM. Yep. So they might be a little bit short as well. We might get some clues from them. Minus they also, they jobby, also have an FA Cup third, third round replay, as I said, next Wednesday night away to Blackpool. Could also go to extra time. Brentford Forest is on the Saturday. So, and I imagine... The narrative around the game will be all about him. It will all be positivity and etc. I don't have minutes concern over him. No, nope, me either. At all. Um, like, does he definitely play 90? No. Do I think he probably gets through 80 or so at least? Yeah. And I think under the circumstance where it's 80, it'd probably be the 2 new up or something like yeah. that. And maybe he came off. Um, if required, I think he'd go to full 90. Um, he's obviously a crucial player for them and they're in the shit right yeah. they need results and this is actually the only good fixture they've got coming up for a while yep. so I I really don't mind if people want to go Tony for captaincy it's a shame but I don't know how after. people can yeah I don't know how you make it work buy it at the moment but if someone said to me and I've had a, a few I shout out one of our, our patrons Alex FPO Odyssey has been saying to me for weeks that his intention was to captain Tony this week oh, okay. and the closer it's got the more with sort of Bowen's injury yeah. and Trent, the closer it's got, the more you think, oh, yeah, maybe, I like really maybe, like yeah. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not massively keen on buying him personally, yeah. but yeah, if he's sitting there, yeah, definite consideration. Where would you sort of rank him? I think going without Holland, like just assuming he's not playing, it would still be Saka. For me, and then Tony second. I think. Oh, I think second as well. Yeah, I think, I, above I think Foden. I, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I was probably more above Palmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd go Saka, Tony, Palmer, Foden for me. Rashford or, over Foden for me. Oh yeah. Anyway, a few more games cool. quickly to cover off. Uh, so West Ham at Sheffield United. Now I've seen a few people say James Ward Prowse. Oh, uh, really? No, I'm not like keen that. on that. No. no. I've I've not seen that not shout. D- not as a captaincy. No, like, oh god, no. I don't have to think in there. I wouldn't even want to own him. <sighs> like zero. Uh, con- uh, no, concern. zero thought. I think if I had to punt at West Ham, I'd be like Ben Rama. There's a chance Mabama plays up front if people are looking for an enabling forward. We must stress that Bowen might only miss one game. It has been reported as sort of three weeks, but remember as well, and this is also important. Um, Obviously, game week 22 from this point is how many weeks away? It's at least two midweeks yeah. away, isn't it? West Ham, Jan, play on, yeah. West Ham play on the Thursday as well. So you probably won't get a press conference mm. for West Ham ahead I, of I the really 22 deadline. I really don't like any of them, to be honest. Like, I know it's Sheffield United and then Bournemouth at home, but Bournemouth are improving. And no, then... I'm not keen. I, I imagine as well, I don't want to speak for West Ham fans, but I imagine that if, if you mention it to a West Ham fan that, that, about a captain and West Ham player, Without Bowen, without Pakatar, without Kudos, they'd probably be quite surprised that yeah, that, that was being I, considered. I think there's so many better options than going to, for a Ward Prowse. Yeah, the best captaincy might be Ben Brereton Diaz, uh, who's been priced as a midfielder. 
at 5.0. That's worth keeping an eye on because that very easily could be OOP, actually, as we move yeah. forward in weeks. Although, as per my mate Tom Cannell from Who Got The Assist, he may describe that as a reverse OOP, That's which spells poo. <laughs> poo. Uh, Bournemouth against Liverpool. Yeah. Do you still own Darwin? <laughs> He's the best captaincy in this game, Dominic Solanke. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. I still think Darwin slightly. I mean, how do you even know who's going to... This is the problem with the Liverpool player. Over a week away, how do you know who's going to play? No. I, I guess it's Solanke, similar to Watkins. The only one I'd but... be really confident of the attacking players would play is Diaz. Yes, I'd, I'd agree would, with that. Uh, Diaz wouldn't be a captaincy oh, no, consideration. I'd also agree with that. Uh, I hesitated just because, uh, I don't know, it's this obsession I've got. I think Darwin, if he plays, like, he will have a hat full of chances. Solanke, like Watkins, like, you know he's going to play 90 minutes probably. It's consistent. Just feels a bit vanilla. <laughs> he, he came on Nunes last night and he assisted both goals. Yeah. And certainly Liverpool looked far better for him being on the pitch. Because what they needed was a little bit of chaos at 1-0 down playing at home and he, and he provided it, right? And he, he played well and he was very unlucky not to score, actually. I know it will go down as another big chance, but it was one of them, he's come across his body and all he can do is open his body and direct it and it just happens, it, it hits Leno. Um, so he could have actually hauled last night. It was really good when he came on, but I only saw the second half. I thought Jossel was great as well. Yeah, he was, was really good really good Arsenal when he came on as well, I thought. So I think Jota and Nunes from Liverpool could both be considered. Do you think Solanke is better than both then? As a captaincy? My concern would be looking at the game and the bits I saw last night, particularly in that early stage of the second half last night. You've taken Salah out. You've taken Trent out. We're almost certain he isn't going to play at Bournemouth. Yeah. And it's unlikely that Shaboshlai will play either. That's, yeah, that's their right side chunk, of the pitch. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. That's why I also think there's a real narrative about Diaz because I think his ball carrying in a game like that would be really important. They've used Elliot quite a bit as the right-sided forward yep. in the last couple of games. Now, they took him off quite early last night. Um, but could they do that again? And then if they do, what is it like? Is it Jota versus Nunes? Mm. And then... Yes, yeah, too much uncertainty. I mean, last night they went with the four attackers together on the pitch towards the end, but they were chasing, right? They played that second half last night like it was the second leg, not like the first leg. They were like, let's get this done if we can, basically. So I just think there's, there's way too much risk element there with the Liverpool players, I think. I think if it was this weekend, I'd be really confident that Nunes would start. Why? Just because he yeah, didn't start the other night. Okay. But the space in between the games makes it more difficult to predict under this probability, I think. Klopp did say that Nunes was meant to start last night. Oh. But he'd had a, a little bit of a concern. And that's why they'd left him on the bench. Obviously, it wasn't a huge concern because he's come on he and had a huge on, yeah. impact in the game. Yep. To be honest with you, Clayton, if I had to captain a player from that fixture, I think it'd be Solanke. Okay. Yeah. Can't argue it. I know he'll play. Other than he has been linked to a move to Newcastle this yeah. week, which doesn't make a lot of sense. No, I don't get that either. No, it's not one I'd see happening. But it would be peak peak FPL, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. He, he joins Newcastle next week. Bagged against City. We won't bag because they've already played. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So he just wouldn't play at all, would he? Yeah. <laughs> if he moved next midweek, he doesn't play for anyone, yeah, does true. he? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, the Monday night game uh, is Brighton against Wolves. See, I would like to captain a Brighton player in this game I just don't know who I think there'll be goals in it yeah add. that that's why I um, like it and I think the outstanding captaincy choice and it might be a few things rogue is stupid and well Huang from Asia I don't suppose is oh, going to yeah, do geez. the business um, <laughs> Ciao Pedro yeah he's in great form mate yeah and good Evan shout. Ferguson is not they're short of wide players, so in and out of possession, he can be used in that, although he's not at the moment. But I think, you know, if Deserby, and I've seen him do this five minutes into a game before and go, change the system. Yeah. If he did decide to do something like that, having Jao Pedro in the team certainly would help at the moment. There there's many, no reason to think he wouldn't start, there which be is many unusual Pedro with him. owners, though, at the minute? Yeah, there's got to be. Yeah, still. There's got to yeah. be. And I think, again, like, um, as, as this is a bit of, as as if you're listening to this one, don't do it, mate. Um, but looking at a, a suggested wildcard team for game week 21 and looking at Treble Brighton. And like, yeah, I get that completely. A stupid and gross Shao Pedro. Yeah, yeah no, no real arguments on that from me. Pedro, I think, if you were wildcarding right now, yeah. 
Yeah, you'd want to look at that, I think. He was uh, on FPL Review, joint fifth with Palmer. And I'm not Alvarez surprised well. by that. Because yeah. I think as well, and I don't use Review in a way like you might or some of the listeners might, but I would imagine his expected minutes has probably increased quite a bit recently, yeah. and that will help. Yeah. We're not looking at him going, what is he expected minutes 65 or something like that. Yeah. We probably are looking at a higher plus. number, yeah, yeah, possibly. There's no reason to think that he wouldn't start against Wolves. And... We've said that recently, but until the injuries to Mitoma and Adingra, that's not been the case all season. But at the moment, it is. I mean, 5.4, it's great. Their fixtures are brilliant going forward. Like, if I had to buy Jao Pedro or Tony right now, buy Jao Pedro. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. That's where I'd be at. Um, that is part price influenced, obviously. But well, I think fixtures as well, right? That's a big play in it. Yeah, I think if they were, this, if they were both 6.4, I'd, I'd buy Pedro. Yeah. I think, yeah. So, yeah, I don't mind that. It's a long wait if you decide to captain him. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. It's how many days? Wait, it's 11 day wait. <laughs> but I suppose is he, there's 11 days of the game week without knowing that your captain has blanked. Yeah. So you'll only know it right yeah, at the that's end. That's true. That you go, that but if everyone else returns, you wait 11, 11 days just to find out he's been benched <laughs> because the Zerbi can do that sort of shit. No, I think you'll play. I think that's the outstanding one. I think. Wolves are good offensively, which would put me off. Of, you know, if people are hoping for their stupid and 15 pointer, like I think Wolves go there and score. Yeah. At the same time, that doesn't make me think Cunha would be the, the captaincy option here. So I think the outstanding one from that game would be Pedro. Yeah. So are you still captain Richarlison? <laughs> yes. But come. So, so you're an Arsenal fan going to captain a Tottenham player, and I'm a Tottenham fan going to captain an Arsenal player. Is that right? Oh, I hate modern football. Yeah. This is why they come to me for the analysis and not you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to do it, yeah? Well, it, it will be between Richarlison and Palmer. I've got a feeling I'll be flicking in between Friday. But you do think the best choice is Saka, to I, clarify. If I own Saka, I've, yeah. I think out of everyone we've gone through, I believe Saka's the best I choice. I think yeah. Saka-Palmer will be the, the most popular two. Um, I will probably vice-captain Cole Palmer. I, if you, but you were talking about getting Foden in, no? Palmer over Foden for me. Okay. Uh, I, I may just still vice captain Watkins just because of the. I'm vice the captain. Absolute, Watkins, I know what that absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there's no reason to think Cole Palmer wouldn't start. There really isn't. You know, I don't think Nkunku is not going to be available. They'd be mad if they don't play him. And especially as they've got a free midweek afterwards as well. There's no reason not to. I think the most likely for me is Saka captain Palmer vice. I think that's, that's probably. First and third best choice. I think, like you, I think maybe Tony's the second best here. Yeah, I do. But it just it doesn't line up nicely. I'd, ha- I'd have Rashford in the top five. Yeah. So, yeah, again, your logic was pretty sound on that. So I just don't really want to own Marcus Rashford for a substantial period of time. And I think maybe... I, I start looking at onesie and go, right, if you had to captain Foden or Jao Pedro, for example, I think I'd go Pedro, you know. Okay. I think so. So I think Pedro would possibly sneak into my, my top five. But yeah, I've, I think Saka, just over Palmer, is the standout. The thing is as well, with the data stuff, in terms of, like, it projected is cool. But when you're looking back at the previous stuff, I don't know how helpful that is for just one game. Yeah, I agree. Should I captain one of my triple Arsenal events? Do you see a... Well, I said 3-0, right? <laughs> you haven't got anything offensive enough there to be excited about. No. If Palace get a penalty, as they will score. Oh, yeah, I was joking to be fair. So, if you were thinking David Ray, another pen save. <laughs> no chance. Wouldn't advise that. Right, I think that's it, Clates. Yeah, lovely stuff. Cheers, mate. Uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow with my Arsh James stream. That's going to be 10 a.m. tomorrow morning on YouTube. Audio will follow quite shortly after that. So, if you've got any cues, captaincy, chip strategy, etc., off the back of the content, obviously, I do recommend listening back to Tuesday's chip strategy pod. With the results in the Carabao, it means that it's basically still good to go and still completely relevant. Thank you for everybody who's liked, shared, retweeted, said nice things. It's really, really appreciated. There will be more chip strategy stuff to come. Uh, thank you very much, Clayton. Just yes, leaves mate. me to say, play it your way as always, guys. And cue music, please, Manchild.